I think it's safe to say that Rachel Maddow is officially the left-wing equivalent of Sean Hannity. She's also the MSNBC equivalent of H.A. Goodman because she really found this one issue that drove ratings, it got her views and clicks online, and it made her incredibly popular. It essentially made her, period. And because she found this one issue, she chose to stick to it because monetarily speaking, it behooved her to do just that. Now, I don't have to tell you guys what that issue is. We all know which issue I'm talking about. Russia, Russia, Russia hates Russia, 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 Putin, Russia's Russia, 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 Russian, 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 Russia, Russia, Moscow, Moscow, Russia, Russian, pro Russian, Russian, Russia, Russian, 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 the Russians, Russian, 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 Russia, Russian, 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 Moscow, Russian, Russian, Russia, Putin, Russian, 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 against us, Russians, the Russians, Russia against the US, the Russians, Russia, 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 Russian, Russian, Russian government scheme, the Russians, Vladimir Putin, Russia, Vladimir Putin, Russia, Putin, Putin and Russia, Russia, Moscow, Russia, Russian, Russia, Russia, the Russians, Russian, Russians, Russia, Russia, Russian, Russian, Russia, Russia, Putin, 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 Russian, 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 Russia, the Soviet Empire, the second of the 20th century's great evils, communism, Russia, communism, Russia, assault by Russia, 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 Putin despises the West in general and the United States in particular, the Soviet Empire, Russia, 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 they're the adversary, they they want to bring us down the Soviet Union. Okay, that was, uh, that's all for that show. That was one, that was from one show. Yeah. <laughs> so it's safe to say that she talked about Russia nonstop for two years because that's what helped her tremendously. It gave her a huge ratings boost. She actually became number one at numerous points over the course of the last two years because a lot of people looked to her as the person who would give them coverage of this Russia story that they were so captivated by. However, after Mueller's investigation concluded and the report was put out and confirmed that this collusion theory was bogus, which essentially was the driver of the mystery, this treason hypothesis, well, what happened? Obviously, it was the case that MSNBC and Rachel Maddow's ratings specifically tanked because, I mean, you're watching, you're tuning in every single night for two years and the thing she told you that was going to happen didn't happen. So obviously that's a disappointment. And in cable news, ratings is everything. If you don't have good ratings, that can threaten you existentially. So Rachel Maddow, she knew that she had to make a choice after the Mueller report came out. Am I going to pivot now and actually do my job as a journalist and educate my viewers about the issues that they need to hear about? Or am I going to try to milk this Russia Gate story a little bit longer in order to see if I can still salvage this story, get a little bit more views and clicks. She chose the latter. And now what's happening is this Russia story has graduated. It's no longer just about Russia and how they're controlling Donald Trump. Now it's about Russia bad and the United States needs to always take an adversarial stance against Russia no matter what. So here's what she said recently about Russia. And what you're going to see here is she's going to take this issue, the story that she's been covering, and she's now going to weaponize it to attack Trump. But simultaneously as she's attacking him, she's trying to goad him into intervention in Venezuela. Literally, this is an MSNBC host, a supposed left winger who's going to side with John Bolton here. I mean, how do you come to work anymore if you're John Bolton, right? Regardless of what you thought about John Bolton before this, of his whole career and his track record, I mean, set of a sudden, just think of John Bolton as a human being. This is what John Bolton, human being, thought his job was this week. Like, again, whether, or not, whether you like what he's saying here or not, this is what they've had him out there saying. The Trump administration has also made the claim that Russia is very much involved in propping up the Maduro regime. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo told my colleague Wolf Blitzer yesterday that there was a plane waiting to take Maduro to Cuba, but the Russians talked him out of it. What exactly is the Russian role here? 
Look, the Russians uh, like nothing better than putting a thumb in our eye. They're using the Cubans as surrogates. Uh, they'd love to get effective control of a country in this hemisphere. We've made it clear to the Russians in a lot of conversations at a lot of different levels, uh, some of which are going to continue today, why we think this behavior is unacceptable to us. Yeah, you thought that was your job, but it turns out uh, not at all. Not after Vladimir Putin gets done with President Trump today. He is uh, not looking at all to get involved in Venezuela, other than he'd like to see something positive happen for Venezuela. Putin doing anything in Venezuela? <laughs> Who said Putin's doing anything bad in Venezuela? Who have you been listening to? I'm with him. He says he's not. I mean, John Bolton, God bless you. Good luck delicately and carefully shaving around that impressive mustache when you have to look at yourself in the mirror in coming days, Mr. National Security Advisor. I mean, this is who you're working for. You thought your job was to push Russia back because of what they're doing in Venezuela. The president spent an hour on the phone with Vladimir Putin today. Putin told him he's not in Venezuela. So now the new position of the U.S. government is that Putin's not in Venezuela. She officially belongs on Fox News. Because it was always a sure bet that if you tuned in to Fox News, they would always take the pro-war stance because they have defense contractors that advertise on their stations. And of course, you'd expect MSNBC and CNN to do this, but never to the extent that Fox News does it. Never explicitly in the way that Fox News does it. But here she is, siding with John Bolton. Now, if she wants to agree with John Bolton about the extent to which Russia is influencing the situation in Venezuela, fine. But the underlying implication in that segment was that this is bad, and as a result, because this is bad, then subsequently, what should logically follow? We take action to stop that influence in Venezuela, to stop Vladimir Putin from meddling in Venezuela. If she were a real journalist, she would be asking why we're in Venezuela and why we're allowed to meddle in Venezuela, but Russia isn't. Why is it just assumed that us being in Venezuela is inherently good and Russia being in Venezuela is inherently bad? Maybe all countries should leave Venezuela alone. Maybe all countries should stop meddling. But over the course of the last couple of years, she was screeching about how Russia meddled in our election. And here she is explicitly advocating for us to meddle with Venezuela's affairs. This is about the oil. Now, Rachel Maddow should be telling people about this. She's smart enough to know what's really happening here. But what is she choosing to do? She's making the choice to not tell people the truth and instead to focus on the aspect of this story that will get her the most ratings. If you can spin this and make it about Russia and not about the U.S. empire intervening in another Latin American country, well, that's better for ratings than just telling people the truth. So this is what a sellout looks like, ladies and gentlemen. Rachel Maddow has sold her soul for ratings and views, and she knows that she brought people along on this ride, this Russian ride, and she is determined to convince you that Russia is the greatest threat to international peace and security. And if we don't fight them at every step of the way, fight them at every turn, be overtly adversarial, then that's inherently evil. And yet, conservatives have the nerve to say that there's this liberal bias Someone who's advocating for war on MSNBC, I wouldn't call them liberal. I would call that individual a conservative tool of the military-industrial complex who is doing exactly what they want her to do. Add to this case that Trump has currently tried to build that legitimizes their potential military efforts in Venezuela, if it comes to that. Shame on Rachel Maddow. And what's devastating is that I know a lot of lefties in person who still absolutely adore and respect Rachel Maddow and they take whatever she says as gospel. 
And this is what she's doing. Because she has that legitimacy, this makes her particularly even more dangerous, I'd argue, than Sean Hannity. Because I think a lot of people can look at Sean Hannity and dismiss him because this guy is clearly cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. But Rachel Maddow is seemingly intelligent. She's articulate. She knows what she's talking about, presumably. So for her to do this, that makes her uniquely dangerous. Because the people who have legitimacy and parrot this type of propaganda, this pro-war propaganda, they're especially dangerous.